guest today is Julie Oka Donley, Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. Thank you, Ma, for joining Sahara Reporters. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. First question is, what is Nigeria's trafficking profile in terms of figures? Well, the trafficking profile is very high. Now, when you talk about the trafficking profile, because in NAPTIP, we re restrict ourselves with victims of trafficking. You know, sometimes people mix up trafficking and migration. Okay. A lot of people, are, you know, come back, you know, like are repatriated back to Nigeria and all of that, you know. So sometimes you mix them up. But when you're asking for the figures relating to trafficking, what we have so far in NAPTIP, we've been, we've been able to rescue over 12,000 victims of trafficking from inception in 2004 till date. And um, we've been able to rehabilitate over 6,000 as well. Why, why is trafficking, human trafficking, very rampant in Nigeria? Well, the truth is that there are so many factors. It's not just a one-way thing. Um, sometimes we can attribute it to poverty, okay. um, lack of jobs, um, ignorance most of the time is mainly as a result of ignorance and greed on the part of these criminals who have decided to take advantage of um, vulnerable youths, men and women to make it uh, a business. So there are so many factors responsible for this and unfortunately so many people are ignorant because they think that life is better on the other side than here. And so criminals take advantage of that and exploit them. Over the years, we, there's the narrative that Edo State is the hub of human trafficking in Nigeria. Has that changed? What is NAPTI doing to change that? Well, I want to say that is really a misconception because Edo State is not the only state that is endemic. Edo State, yes, used to be very high. And I'll tell you why. Um, back in the days, some of the girls from Edo State were actually going to Italy for prostitution mm -hmm. as a business. And then human trafficking now took over prostitution. The criminal network gangs now saw that there was so much money in this business and they now decided to take advantage of these ones and turned it into a trafficking thing. So unfortunately, those from Edo who found themselves in Italy were forced to invite their family members, their friends, deceiving them that they were going to do business there. They had jobs for them in the hotels and all of that. Only for them to get there to find out that it was a different ball game. Um, I'm curious as to whether the use of house helps is also a form of human trafficking. Oh yes, you know, a lot of people have to be educated. Um, in the first place, one is not expected to employ anyone as a house elf that is less than 13. Even at that, 13 is too young. But the law says anyone that is under 13 cannot be employed as a house elf. That's a different thing. Secondly, a lot of people also aid and abet trafficking without even knowing it. Why do I say so? You have a house help, for example, in your house or a cook or a driver, mm -hmm. and you're paying the salary to a so-called agent. That's trafficking. A laborer is worthy of his or her wages. So if someone is working for you, you, you are expected to pay directly to that person. But the moment you begin to pay the salary of that person working for you to a third party, whether the mother, the father, the uncle, or whatever he or she calls herself, then you're engaged in trafficking. If Naptic knows that the use of house, house helps is, uh, aids human trafficking, what measures is Naptic taking to stop or cop the use of ourselves sensitization like what i'm doing now we go around and we sensitize people and whenever we get information that a house help is being exploited we arrest the trafficker and then um, rescue the girl from the house put them in our shelters we have shelters attached to our offices where we keep um, rescued victims to rehabilitate and reunite them back into the society Speaking of shelters, how many shelters does um, NAPTI have? About we have 10 shelters because we have 10 offices and every office has a shelter attached to it. And the federal government um, 
I suppose it's in, enough um, funds to take care of the shelter. Well, I don't want to go into the funding thing now because um, funding, as you know, is um, very, very poor. And so we also partner with as many partners as possible. We have international donor agencies that come to our rescue and, and other private and public um, organizations as well that um, support us from time to time. When you rescue a victim and you put this person in your shelters, for how long does this person have to stay before they regain their freedom? Well, so each, um, I don't want to, you to use the word freedom because in the first place they are not in jail. We only try to rehabilitate them. And secondly, it depends on the situation. Every case is different. You know, we do it on a case by case because it may take one person three months, you know, to, to get over the trauma. Mm -hmm. First of all, we counsel you. So it depends on how you're able to adjust, you know, during the counseling session. So it could, I'll, take, I'll say roughly it could take between three months to three years, depending on the situation. 26 girls were recently alleged to have, murdered, to have been murdered while attempting to cross the Mediterranean Sea. Reports say that the girls were being trafficked for sex. Has NAPTI looked into this matter? Have they begun investigations? Well, right now we are told that the Italian government is investigating. So we are waiting for the outcome of the report of their investigations. And then we'll know what steps to take next. Um, also planning to have a meeting with um, the Italian ambassador. And um, we're hoping also that the UN would um, also carry out an independent investigation into this matter. Because, I mean, this is becoming a case too many. Uh, we are told that um, 26 of them were found dead. And uh, we are interested to know in knowing the cause of their death, of course, through forensics and all of that. And we also want to be sure that they are not victims of um, organ harvesting. We want to be sure their organs are intact. We want to know what happened to them, why they were killed, where they were killed, when they were killed, and who killed them, and why. You and know, about so. organ harvesting, can you throw more light on that? Well, organ harvesting now is simply the sale of organs. Uh, this is a new dimension that the traffickers have taken now. They, they take out the organs of the victims and sell for so much money because there are a lot of people waiting for organ um, transplants in various parts of the world. So it's big business for them. So this is, this is even bigger and, and more dangerous oh, than yes, human Oh, yes, absolutely. It's bigger and more dangerous because, I mean, the victims may never live to tell the story. You know, when their organs are taken off them, they are, they, are, they are usually killed, except maybe if one or two are lucky and they decide to take just one organ, maybe one kidney, and stitch them up, and um, they are able to continue with their lives. Anyways, EFCC Chairman Magu Ibrahim has stated that the commission will begin to go after human traffickers. Do you perceive this as agency rivalry? Absolutely not, because NAPTIP cannot work alone. We have a good rapport, a good relationship with other law enforcement agencies, and we work together, we complement each other. We work with the Nigerian police, we work with the Nigerian Immigration Services, NDLEA, EFCC. As a matter of fact, I'm very happy with the partnership. I paid a courtesy call to the acting chairman about two or three weeks ago. And then um, he was very happy to receive us and um, was ready to cooperate with us. Because don't forget, that in, in trafficking, there also, you also have the aspect of the funding. So while we're prosecuting you for the act of human trafficking, we're also looking into the money, the monetary aspect of it. And that's where EFCC comes in. Senator Shewusani visited you um, at your office in September. And you did complain about agency rivalry. What were you talking about? You know... Interagency rivalry is very common. Common in the sense that, for example, if one of the law enforcement agents arrests a trafficker, the right thing to do is to transfer the case to NAPTIP mm -hmm. because that is our mandate. But you see them wanting to go on air, announcing that they've arrested a trafficker and they are prosecuting a trafficker, and they refuse to refer the trafficker to NAPTIP for us to prosecute and carry on with the investigation. So that's a very, very bad case of rivalry because at the end of the day, the whole aim is defeated. Why do I say so? We need to have statistics. We need to know the data. We need to have data in our palms to know how many traffickers have been arrested within a period of time, how many have been prosecuted, and how many victims are rescued. So we need to know all of this. If I may ask, 
who are these agencies that the rivalry with Snapchat? Well, I don't need to. I don't need to specify. You know, one particular agency. It's it's common amongst a lot of agencies. So it's not just one agency that is involved in this. You know, at least more than one or two agencies have done one or two things. You know, that is I can liken to rivalry. But I am sure we are going to get over that because. Very soon, we plan to have meetings with all of the law enforcement agencies and see how we can cooperate, work together, you know, to achieve a common goal. Because we're, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all working to save human lives for the benefit of mankind and for Nigeria as a whole. Um, U.S. Department of State report, 2017 report on trafficking in persons for Nigeria indicated that government officials and security forces committed sexual exploitation during, sorry, committed sexual exploitation, including sex trafficking, in nearly all IDP camps in Borno State. What is NAPTI doing about this? Well, at this time, after the report, NAPTI decided to um, deploy officers to man some of these IDP camps, just to sensitize them and to ensure that things like this do not happen. Because it will, it, it, it will be very sad for these traumatized victims who are in the IDP camps to be subjected again mm -hmm. to any form of abuse, you know, and so we're trying to do as much as we can to prevent this from happening. But uh, even after that report, nobody was charged for sexual, for sex trafficking that goes on in IDP camps. We've not, we've not heard any reports. We've not seen anything. Well, the truth is you cannot prosecute anyone without information. I mean, if we have information and um, people can come out to testify, then of course we'll arrest and prosecute. A few years ago, a former governor of Zamfara State, Alaji Sani Yerima, brought an underage girl from Egypt as a bride. And there was a lot of noise about it, but it later died down. And today he's a senator and he's never been prosecuted. Has NAPTI developed the ability, the capacity to prosecute the powerful elites involved in human and sexual trafficking? In Natif, we don't have anyone called powerful elites. As soon as we get, or elites or whatever they call themselves, as soon as we get information that points to trafficking, we pick you up and arrest you straight up, and we prosecute you if you have enough evidence to support it. There's been allegations in some quarters that um, immigration officers at local airports in Nigeria aids human traffickers to sort of like um, allow them have a smooth um, transaction of trafficking. Has NAPTIV looked into these accusations? Well, we hear of cases here and there, but whenever we hear things like this, I'm sure we'll be able to discuss with the boss of the immigration services because he is the only one who can um, talk to or educate his men. So I, 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 I really don't see that... Um, as a problem because if we get reports of that nature we definitely we have a very good relationship with the Nigeria Immigration Services and the chief of the Nigeria Immigration Services is a very very thorough decent disciplined man so I'm sure he would never tolerate any such practices by any of his men and I'm sure if such uh, reports get to him he will handle it from his side. Lastly um, let's have you educate our viewers on the dangers of human trafficking and how to identify some of those um, traffickers? Very good question. You know, I'd like to appeal to the youths of these days. Do not, there's no point leaving Nigeria in an irregular manner. You can leave Nigeria properly. If you want to go to school, you want to go and, you know, for a proper reason, but you don't just wake up, pick up your stuff, and decide to leave Nigeria because you think there's a better life. The young boys are being raped. They are used as sex prostitutes. Because why? They deceive them that they are taking them to a football academy. There's nothing like that. The young girls, they deceive them that, oh, come, you're so beautiful, come and model. Some say, oh, we're going to give you scholarships abroad. Oh, we are going to give you good jobs abroad. All this is absolutely false. When people begin to offer you jobs abroad, football academy, modeling jobs, please do not go. Call NAPTIP. You're likely to be a potential victim of trafficking.